We're joined by Hushang Amir Ahmadi, a presidential candidate in Iran three years ago. He's the founder of the American Iranian Council. It is very good to see you as always. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having me. Uh, some hardliners and hardliner media in Iran are claiming that the moderates and reformists did not get a majority. Is that just wishful thinking on their part? No, they did not get the majority. That's true. I mean, they got almost 110 uh, seats of a 290 seat. Uh, and not all of them are reformists. There is a, com uh, a coalition of, of reformists, and uh, centrists, and pragmatists. But, but the, that coalition doesn't. But that co the, the coalition, coalition has the majority. The coalition together has right. ha has gained about 110 uh, of the 290, and the rest are either uh, in the uh, hardliners or independent. But th these are not the same hardliners that we know. These are softer hardliners, supposedly. So in fact, I, I would say that the parliament as a whole has moved more toward the center than it used to be. Uh, that's that's the, the reality. And that the, uh, the problem, however, is that the, the parliament in recent years have increasingly become less powerful. And, and they really don't have much to do. Because hardliners are still in charge of the judiciary, in charge of the security forces, and of course the supreme leader is Exactly, in fact, in, exactly. The most, the, the most powerful people are non-elected in a way. So the elected uh, officials are still underdogs uh, in the Islamic Republic. But then again, I have to say that the Islamic Republic is under tremendous pressure domestically, particularly economically speaking, and in the region because of all this uh, instability there. And therefore, uh, the, the system in Tehran has been thinking of trying to be more moderate and more accommodative to the people. The point is how far they will, they will want it to go. Unfortunately, in the past, they haven't gone too far. How far do you think they will go? Do you think there'll be more openness to the West? I think the Islamic Republic, it depends. Uh, Any time the, 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 the system in Tehran has felt more secure, it has been toughening position. Whenever they have felt, you know, under pressure and less secure, they have been opening. In fact, uh, their policy has been no war and no peace sort of a situation. Uh, but, neither, but now this would seem to be putting more pressure on them to the, moderate the, and, and to liberalize lot. because yeah. once the sanctions, uh, now that the sanctions have been removed because of the nuclear deal, yes. the hope is that the economy will improve. And if it does improve, I would imagine that the Iranian people that would want to the press even harder. See, that is the problem. The, the vote in Iran is not about politics because politics doesn't change much in Iran. It's about economics. It, it's about sanctions that have to go. It's, it's about uh, opening the, 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 the country to younger generation, 70, uh, basically 70 percent of the Iranian population is under 40 years of age and they really have very little to do with the revolution. They wanted their life better. They wanted to do what the American you know, young people are trying to do. So again, and, and many of them are in Tehran and the reformists and moderates made their biggest gains in Tehran. Is it too concentrated in, in Tehran and other urban areas? Tehran obviously is a capital and is very politically active. In Tehran, uh, the participation rate was about 50 percent versus 62 uh, percent for the nation as a whole. So the participation rate wasn't that high. And however, if you look at the statistics carefully, you will see that most of these people came from the north uh, and center Tehran, which are the well-to-do, from the upper middle class to upper class. Right. And the, in the southern part of the country, the participation was much lower, probably in 30 percent or 35 percent, meaning that the poor people, the working class people, uh, and, the, and the, the small shopkeepers were not really very happy with the situation, or not very happy with the situation, because they think economically, as opposed to the upper class and the northern Tehranis who think more politically. So they, they were thinking more politically when they went to vote. But these people who did not come to vote, they were thinking economically because they don't believe that what's happening will uh, improve their lives. Their lives. So that's the big, big how, issue. Yeah. I think that's where the, uh, the, the problem comes, uh, that whether Rouhani, uh, President Rouhani, can deliver uh, on the economic side in the next two years. Yeah. Unfortunately, Iranian politics is not always sustainable. They go all the way up and then go down. I mean, remember this very reformist had in, in about uh, 10 years ago, had, had, they had, had both power. the parliament right. and the executive branch, and it still... Still they, weren't able to do they much, were and not, they weren't and able to sustain At the it. end of the day, they gave up the power 
to Ahmadinejad. Yeah. You see, so that's where the problem is. It is very possible that we may end up with that situation again unless the economy really improves. Hushang Amir Mahdi, uh, the Iranian-American Council, uh, good to have you with us. Thank you. And I thank you for having me.